be finding Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9 first, and uh, while you're finding Hebrews 9, I'll have it on the screen there for you in just a minute, <clears throat> if everything's working properly, I'll have it up there, but uh, I've got some things drawn up here that's totally different than what we have dealt with on the covenants. Now, I'm going to try my best to make this as simple as possible. How many of y'all realize that you can make the Bible say just about anything you want it to say? You can have one verse that says one thing, and then you'll go over here and find another verse that says something totally opposite, and you're thinking, okay, my something's wrong with my Bible. Well, and so we're going to look at some of those um, tonight. Hopefully it'll clear this up. Now, we've been talking about the covenants. The Edenic Covenant all the way down to the New Covenant. Now, and I told you last week the difference between a New Covenant and the New Testament. Two totally different things. There's several covenants. There's only two testaments. Old Testament, New Testament. There's only two. Uh, a covenant is an agreement between two parties or more. God made a covenant. Noah. God. Noah. God made a covenant with Abraham. God. Abraham. Two parties or more. A testament don't have to be two parties. It's just God. <laughs> so those are just a few of uh, the differences. Now, when you start talking about the New Testament, we're going to start. Some of you have seen this. That's fine. Those of you watching on the Internet, some of you have seen it. Hang on, and hopefully we might get to something that uh, you may not have seen. When, now don't, don't say it out loud. Don't holler anything out loud. But because um, if, if you just so happen to be, I know none of you would be wrong, but if you just were so happen to be wrong, it would, you know, go out on the Internet and you'd be embarrassed. <laughs> but when would you say the New Testament started? And just think about that for a second. Well, look at there. Look, you see, you can always count on Cecil. Especially when he just had a birthday and he's just full of knowledge. Uh, look at Hebrews 9 and hopefully you're there and uh, we're going to answer that question. And look at Hebrews 9 and look at verse number 15. And for this cause, he, that's talking about Christ, is the mediator, that's a medium, of the New Testament. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they, which are called, might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Notice the next verse, verse 16. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Verse 17 says, for a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Now, with those verses in mind, I know, I understand, I got it. I understand that in your Bible, when you open your Bible, you've got Genesis through Malachi, and that's considered the Old Testament. And then when you, you flip over to the next page of Matthew, it says, you know, whatever it says, uh, the New Testament or whatever. And, uh, and we understand that, and that's just a division. They included the birth of Christ into the New Testament. That's totally fine. But a testament is a force after men are dead. You don't read the last will and testament of somebody until they are dead. So the New Testament is the will and testament of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it can't be read, it can't go into effect until after being, or after the mediator, the death of the testator. So what Brother Cecil said is exactly right. The New Testament starts right here at the cross, the death of the testator. Now, I say that for a reason, because that puts most of Matthew... Most of Mark, there's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That puts the majority, because uh, Jesus dies in what? 
Matthew 27. He raises from the dead in Matthew 28. So you only have one chapter that's in the New Testament. Everybody follow that? The first 27 chapters are in the Old Testament. Everybody understand that? Mark. Mark uh, Jesus don't die till, is it 15? He raises from the dead in 16. So that one, that one chapter is in the New Testament. The rest of Mark, 1 through 15, is in the Old Testament. Does that make sense? Luke, same way. I think he dies in 22, Luke 22. Uh, he dies in John 19. The majority of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is in the Old Testament. When I say in the Old Testament, what I mean is under that old covenant. I'll give you for instance, when Jesus was born, he was born in Matthew 2, or uh, uh, Matthew 1, Luke 2, so on and so forth. Well, guess what? That's before he died. So that places all of that in the, uh, when Jesus was born, he was born under the law. Does that make sense? So you've got Genesis through Malachi. That's easy. That's Old Testament. But then you've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the majority of that is under that Old Testament law. They were doing things in, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They were still going to church on Saturday. Uh, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the majority of it, they were still pork abstaining. They were going to church on Saturday to the Jewish synagogue. And they were bringing a sacrifice when they came, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You get it? They're still under that Old Testament law. And then there's a book called uh, the Book of Acts. We dealt with that just a little bit last week. And the Book of Acts happens about right here, and it's the Acts of the Apostles. You see, grace, grace starts right here and goes all the way to where the church leaves out right there. But law doesn't stop at the cross. It carries on, and there's an overlap. Does everybody see that? There's a little overlap right here. Because the first part of the book of Acts, remember if you were here last week, very Jewish. Chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then about 7. Then chapter 8 is where the Ethiopian eunuch was saved. Chapter 9, the Apostle Paul was saved. Chapter 10, Cornelius was saved. He's a Gentile. You got it. All right? You'll have to go back and watch uh, some of last week. So there's a little overlap of where the church age, grace starts, and the law is, uh, let me explain it to you this way, if I can. Presidents change hands. This is not a political speech. I'm just saying any time president changes hands. Uh, the day a new president, what was it, January the 20th? January 20th, a new president took office. But you do realize that there, it takes time. He signed 1,042 executive orders the first day to get rid of what the old administration was doing. So it takes a few days for that to filter down, you understand? Law. When Jesus dies on the cross, he raises from the dead. People didn't wake up the next morning and go, oh, we're saved by grace today. There was a transition. They didn't understand it. Paul had to tell them about it. Does that make sense? So there's a little transition there between law and grace where two systems are, are going on at the same time. There's where most of your confusion in the Bible happens is when you've got to know who's talking, who we're talking to, who we're talking about, things of that nature. Now, I'm going somewhere. Now, remember I told you, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Old Testament, here we go. Acts from... Law to grace from Jew, uh, Jew to Gentile. Well, the Apostle Paul, remember I told you saved in 9? Paul writes 13 books. Romans. Now, Matthew, Jew, 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 Jew. 
Moses, Jew. David, Jew. Malachi, Jew. You got it? Jew, Jew, Jew. Acts, we go into the church age. Romans, they're not Jewish. They're Gentiles. Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st, 2nd Thessalonians, 1st, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon. All to Gentile churches. And then watch. I know some of this is repetition, but that's fine. <clears throat> After Philemon, Romans through Philemon, 13 books, Paul wrote two churches to the church at Rome, to the church at Corinth, to the church at Philippi, to the church which was in Philemon's house, to the church, you got it. The rapture takes place and the church is gone. What's the next book? Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, and Revelation. Where do we hear most of tribulation and kingdom? We read about it in the book of Revelation. So you got, watch. Jew, 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 Jew. The Jews crucified, crucified the Messiah. And God says, all right, time out. Jews, go stand in the corner. I got somebody that wants to listen. Y'all won't listen. Go stand in the corner. Romans, Gentile, 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 Gentile. The church leaves. God says, all right, Jews, y'all ready? You'll listen this time. Hebrews. Jews. All the way. Now, I said all that to say this. Uh, now, once you lay your Bible out in that fashion, I'm going to show you some difficult verses in the Bible, and we're going to lay them out, and we'll see if this might, you know, help. Now, we were talking about, all right, let me give you this right here. Remember this. 1 Corinthians 10, 32. Give none offense, neither to the who? Or to the who? Or to the who? Your whole, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Every verse, every chapter, every book, every word is talking to one of those three groups of people. He's either talking to a Jew, he's either talking to a Gentile, or he's talking to the church of God. When he says the church of God, I'm not talking about a denomination church of God. He's talking about the church which belongs to, preposition of, belongs to God. You understand? So, give you, give, give you this. This is just a little extra. You don't have to pay for this. This is extra. We have Jews and Gentiles. Old Testament, you got Jews, Gentiles. No church. Church don't show up till here, right? Okay. When the church gets here... There's neither Jew or Gentile anymore. You say, all right, you got to explain that. Okay, let me see if I can. <clears throat> I think it's in, uh, let me see. Let's see if it's in uh, Ephesians, I think. <clears throat> I don't even know if I got it. I don't think I put it up here for you. I'll just have to read it for you. Uh, let's see, no, Galatians. Galatians, where'd it go? Okay. In Galatians, when I said Galatians, when I said Galatians chapter 3, your mind should have went, that's in here. You with me? Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, to the church of Galatia, a bunch of Gentiles. Watch. I'm going to read it for you. Verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there, where? In Christ is neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free nor male nor female. For you're all one in Christ Jesus. So once you're saved, once you get saved right here, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, you are placed, baptized, put into the body of Christ. There I am. I got put into. When I got put into there, my nationality changed. I become a member of 
the church of God. Does that make sense? I'm no longer. So today, if a Jew gets saved, believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, and there are some, a Jew gets saved just like we do, he believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, he's no longer a Jew. He's a, we're all one in Christ in this age. So I hope that makes sense. All right. <clears throat> now, let's look at, uh, oh, let me see. Let me see if I can compare something here. All right. Let's look first at Matthew, look at Matthew 10. <clears throat> Matthew 10. Look at Matthew 10. It's on the screen there for you. Jesus calls out the 12. This is Jesus talking now. Now, pay close attention to this. Watch how confusing this might be. Matthew 10. Verse 5, these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the who? And into any city of the Samaritans enter you not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of who? Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. In Matthew 10, all right, I said Matthew 10. Matthew 10, which side? Over here, right? So Matthew 10 is over here. Matthew 10. Remember I told you. Uh, what was it, 5? Okay, 5 through 7. There he is, right there. Old, under that old. Jesus said, don't go to the Gentiles. Go to the house of Israel. All right. In Matthew 28... Which side? Jesus has died, right? Matthew 28. Matthew 28 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. No, hang on a minute. Jesus said in Matthew 10, Don't go to all nations. Don't go to Samaritans. Don't go to Gentiles. Go only to Jews. When he raises from the dead, now he says go all nations. Those two verses, I don't care who you are, say two totally different things. Let me just, let me just make it more confusing for you. Mark 16, verse 15. Now, I'm going to help you. Yeah, because uh, I'm going to go ahead and put Mark 16, right, or, yeah, Mark, can't even spell, Mark 16 right there. Because Jesus has already rose from the dead. You with me? And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, y'all tell me something. What he said in Matthew 10 and what he said in Mark 16 is two totally different things. How do you fix it? Do you see why now? Do you see why now when you grow up, drive, drive out of this parking lot, you go right or left, don't make any difference. And now you've got churches galore. Everybody says they use the same Bible. Everybody says they believe the Bible. Everybody says they can read the Bible. But if you don't know where you're reading from, if you're claiming Mark, uh, Matthew 10, you need to move to Jerusalem. And start knocking on all the Jews' doors. But if you're on this side, Matthew 28, go teach all nations. Mark 16, preach the gospel to every creature. See the difference? Which side you're on? All right, I hope that. All right, okay, here we go. Romans. Let's see, Romans, let me see. I, I know automatically I'm right here. Romans 1, 16, right there. Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, unto the who first, and then also to the Greek. Watch, you ready? Have you ever wondered why he said to the Jew first? What did Jesus say? Go only to who? The gospel. Jew first. They didn't even accept, also to the Greek. Stay in your seat, don't get excited. <laughs> Jew first, then to the Greek. 
you ever wondered why? Oh, this is, this is too much on a Wednesday night. Have you ever wondered why in John 3, John 3, Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, came to Jesus by night? And then in John 4, he goes to the Samaritans, which is half Jew, half Gentile. John 3, Jew first. Body of Christ. Remember I told you. What does that make up? Jew, Gentile, both together. All one in Christ. Oh, hallelujah. All right. Now, does everybody see that? Now, you, look, I can come up here Sunday morning and preach Mark 10, and, and, and all of us, you know, think, don't, don't go tell, your, if your neighbor is a Gentile, do not go tell him and invite him to church. I'd be preaching the Bible, wouldn't I? It's in the Bible. Now, do you understand why there's church signs and every of them say, all of them say all kind of crazy stuff? They all say, Why? Because people don't know how to rightly divide the Bible. Now, let me give you this one. Look at, all right, that's Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And uh, how many of you have ever heard this one? Matthew 24. Now, Jesus, <clears throat> Matthew 24, hasn't died yet. So Matthew 24 is right over here. I'm running out of room. Matthew 24. You with me? Matthew 24 and 13. It says, but he... That shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And that sounds odd to you. If you were to study Matthew 24, Matthew 24 is talking about this area right over in here. From here to here. Okay? The Son of Man shall come. Da da da. There will be wars and rumors of wars and da da da. All the stuff that it says. But in Matthew 24, 13, he says, He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. That's a tribulation passage. If you miss the rapture and you do not get saved right here, and you go into, you're left behind to go into this tribulation, you will have to endure to the end, not take the mark of the beast. All that kind of thing. Endure. Store up food. You ever, people, now, people do that now, and I don't understand. Look, I ain't storing up nothing. I'm waiting, you know, hallelujah. But what if they get all the bread at the grocery or all the toilet paper, you know? I don't know. But where you need to start to storing up toilet paper and uh, food and, and all this military, uh, where you don't have to cook it, it stays preserved and all that kind of stuff, is right over in here. Why? Because you're going to have to have, you have to have the mark to go to Walmart. So you better have enough stuff stored up so you can endure to the end. Does that make sense? Now, Matthew 24 says you've got to endure to the end to be saved. Acts 16, where am I at? Acts, well, there's 10. So 16 is somewhere right over here. Acts 16, verse 31. And they said, believe on the... Well, verse 30 says, sirs, what the Philippian jailer? Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Paul and Silas. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Paul didn't say anything about enduring to the end. Those two verses say something two, two totally different things. Romans 10, 13. I'm right here. Romans 10, 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? I don't say anything about enduring to the end. You see? He that endures to the end. He's talking to the disciples and he says, hey, when the tribulation happens, y'all going to have to endure to the end. To be saved. And that's true. It all depends on where you're at. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, all right, let's go to. All right, y'all y'all ready for this one? Now let's look at Hebrews. When I said Hebrews, you should automatically. Right, what's Hebrews? 
Jew. Okay? Let's look at Hebrews. Oh, it didn't punch up. Hebrews 3 and verse 6. That may be hard to see the 3 and the 6 up there, but that's Hebrews 3, 6. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if there's a condition, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Now, what does, what does Hebrews 3, 6 sound like? Matthew 24, 13 says, He that endureth to the end, the same should be saved. Hebrews 6, 3 says, You have to hold fast with the confidence. How long? Hold fast until the end. Hebrews is over here. Hebrews 3, 6. Got it? All right. Let's look at Hebrews 3, 14. Same chapter, 14. For we are made partakers of Christ, if there's a condition. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until when? To the end. There's Hebrews 3, 14. All right. Let's see here. See what I got now. Oh, let's see. Let's look at, oh, this is a good one right here. Hebrews 6, 4. Hebrews 6, 4. All right. Now, this verse right here will give you problem. This will make you lay awake at night if you don't know where you're at. Hebrews 6, 4. Y'all ready? For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gale and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Um... I didn't write the other verse in there. I'm going to have to turn to it. Hebrews. I apologize for that. 6.4 for, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened have tasted of the heavenly gift were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again to repentance seeing they crucified themselves the Son of God afraid. You see what that... Verses 4, 5, and 6. For it is impossible to renew them again to repentance if they fall away. Look at that. Let me tell you what, let me, let me just tell you what Hebrews 6 4 says. If you lose your salvation, it's impossible to get it back. You know, everybody, everybody in this day and age, so they're worried about losing your salvation. Well, according to Hebrews 6, 4, if you do, you can't get it back. Now, are y'all reading something different? It is impossible. Y'all see that? It's impossible for those who were once enlightened, have tasted the heavenly gift. And I know some of y'all are looking at me going, Brother Jeremy, you've always said, I know, but I know where I'm at. That verse don't bother me. It's impossible to renew them again to repentance. Listen to me real good in the tribulation. Let's just say somebody start. here he is. He starts out, here he is. He starts out and he goes, man, I miss the rapture. The church is gone. Man, I guess, you know, I guess this stuff is right. I'm going to start looking for the second coming. Lord. And the, pre the first three and a half years goes really good, you know. And about that halfway point, pressure gets on really bad. He runs out of food. His job says if you don't get the mark, you can't work here. You've you got to get that mark in your hand or you, you're going to lose your job. You ain't going to be able to feed your family. And you're not going to be able to go to Walmart or Sam's and buy your groceries. And the pressure gets on. And he takes it. If you take the mark of the beast, it is impossible to be renewed again unto salvation. That verse don't bother me. It's bothered a lot of people. It don't bother me. Why? I know what he's talking about. Once he's tasted the heavenly gift, 
he takes that mark, he's falling away, and to renew him and to repentance is an impossibility. Can't do it. Does that make sense? Well, I hope so. All right, let's look at, uh, let's look at this one. What about this one? Hebrews 10, 26. Same thing. Hebrews. Where are we at? You know what that thing says? For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Boy, has anybody sinned willfully today? Don't raise your hand. I guarantee if Cecil played golf, he sinned willfully. I promise you if he missed it. You know, if he missed that ball, you know. <laughs> Has that verse ever bothered anybody? If you sin willfully after you receive the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. Same thing. If you take the mark of the beast in the tribulation, if you do, you have sinned willfully. Because if you take it, it's going to be willfully. There's no more sacrifice for sin. You, it, you know what that, if you take the mark of the beast, you are going to hell. Do not pass go. Do not click $200. You going. You might as well enjoy the rest of it because that's where you're going. Does that make sense? Now, is there any question about that? All of, it, all of it's laid out right here. James, oh, well, we'll deal with James here in just a second. Let me show you this one, Romans 3.28. Show you Romans 3.28. Real quick. Romans, when I said Romans, you should have, your mind should have went right here. Romans 3 and verse 28. Romans 3.28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. You know what that says? Paul says we are justified by faith without the deeds of the law. I don't have to work my way to heaven. Ephesians, you don't have to turn there, but Ephesians. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. No works, faith alone. All right. Y'all ready? Well, here's another one in Galatians. Galatians let, me, let me get this one right here. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, amen, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed on Jesus Christ, we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Galatians Write it over here. Galatians, what is that? 2, 16. Okay. Let me show you something else. Disturbing. Let me get another color. Let me get another color here. James 2, 24. You ready? James. Now, if you, don't, if you want, all right. I didn't put this one up there. Let me read James 1.1 1, 1 to you. If, you just, if you're questioning, James 1.1. 1, 1. James, a servant of God, of all of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. You know who James is writing to? It told you. Twelve tribes of what? So James 2.24 is where we're reading. And it says, Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Well now folks, I don't know about y'all, we got a serious problem. Do y'all see a serious problem? Romans 3.28, therefore we conclude a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. James 2.24, ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Y'all got a problem? Not if you know where it goes. Be 
because what are they doing in the tribulation? Enduring to the end, holding fast unto the end. They're working their way to the end. They're justified by works. Over here, no works. All faith. You see that? Now, do you see? I mean, I don't care where you go to church. Don't make any difference. I don't care where you go to church. Them two verses say two totally different things. And if you don't know how to write this Bible, then you're going to be uh, in a world of hurt. Y'all got time for one more? Now, there's a lot for James. There was a bunch of James. Um, uh, anyway, you ever worried about, uh, let's see, I have time now. But James 5, I was looking at my time over there. James 5 talks about how a rich man basically without reading the whole chapter James 5 talks about how a rich man can't get to heaven hold the phone a minute James 5 read it when you get home <laughs> and then leave $10 in your account and write me a check for the rest of it so you won't be rich you can go to heaven You say, what what, what we do? James 5, watch. To be rich in the tribulation, you know what you're going to have to do? You won't be able to be rich in the tribulation without. That makes sense. What about Abraham? Abraham was a rich man. Job was a rich man. They went to heaven. James wasn't talking about them. You see, James 5 is talking about a rich man here. You ever, you ever, mm, you ever thought about this in Matthew, uh, uh, Matthew 25, is it? The ten virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish. Okay? Picture this real quick before we go. Ten virgins right here. We got to have oil in our lamps. Five of them ran out of oil. The other five ran out, or the five that ran out of oil ran down to Sam's to buy some. And while they were at Sam's, the Lord came. And they missed the boat. And the only way they could buy oil in the tribulation was to have. The and as soon as those five foolish got to Mark, got them some oil, got back, the Lord done come. And they missed it. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Anyway. All right. Oh, here's a good one. You'll love this. We'll run this, run this one real quick. Matthew 5. When I said, I'm not, not going to write this. Matthew 5 is over here. Would you all agree? Jesus hadn't died yet. Matthew 5. This is what Jesus said. Jesus talking. You have heard that it had been said, an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. He's quoting Exodus 21, I think. Either 12 or 21. I may have it. Anyway. He's quoting from Exodus. Exodus said, eye for an eye, tooth for two. You slapped me, I slapped you. Right? I sort of like it. <laughs> Jesus said, but I say unto you. Now watch. Exodus, eye for an eye, tooth for two. You slapped me, I slapped you. Jesus said, here. But I say unto you that you resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. I don't like that. I'd rather be eye for an eye. Don't y'all? You slap me, I slap you. It's only fair. Jesus said you had heard it been said. That's the way it used to be. But I'm changing it. 
If somebody smacked thee on the right, turn to them and let them hit you. <laughs> now watch. Now some of you are going, oh, how are we going to get out of this? Well, I'm still before the cross. All right, let's see what Paul said about it in Romans. Ready? Romans 12. Recompense. Now wait, hang on, I got I to so y'all can see it. Romans 12 is right over here, right? Romans 12 and 17 and 18. Here we go. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Now I showed you three different verses that say something totally different. Exodus says, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, you slap me, I slap you. Jesus changed it in Matthew 5 and says, if somebody hits you on the right side of the cheek, give him the left one too. Paul says, recompense no man evil for evil. If it's possible, do the best you can. If it's possible, live peacefully with all men. If not, slap the fool out of them. That's what it means in the Greek. <laughs> Paul says, do your best. Paul says, I'm not expecting you to live peaceful all men. Try your best. Sometimes, hey, I know I said it in a funny way, but sometimes it's not possible. Now, I say this and I'm closing because I've already went longer than normal. Some of you are going, no, not really. <laughs> I was on the Frankie Lack show one time, and a guy calls in, and, and he brought up this verse. I, uh, turn the right, or man smites you on the right cheek. We were talking about somebody breaking in your house. And he didn't like what I said about guns, and he didn't like, you know, he didn't think preachers ought to tote guns, you, ought to, you know, all that kind of stuff, and, and, uh, which is fine. Everybody's got an opinion, that's fine. Totally fine. No problem. And uh, so I asked him on the, on the uh, radio, on the phone. He was on the phone. And I said, well, sir, what would you do? Your wife, kids, is in your house, and a guy breaks in, and he's, he's going to kill your wife and your kids and all that kind of stuff. He said, I would do what Jesus said and turn the other cheek. That's what he said. That's what he said. Put my hands up. That's how confusing people can be. Now, over here, where I'm living, in the church age, somebody breaks in my house, it's not possible anymore. Right? To live peaceably with all men. Y'all with me? Paul says, if it's possible, try to live peaceably with all men. There's a difference in breaking my house, pull out in front of me. Pull out in front of me, you know, I'm going to honk the horn or something. You know, try to run you off the road. But other than that, <laughs> breaking my house, you know, it's going to be totally different. You understand? Anyway, now, I hope that can clear up some stuff. Some verses that, you know, can be problematic and are problematic for a lot of different uh, churches and groups and whatever and whatever.